Hello people and welcome to another video from Timmel's Information Technology Group. Today I will be building a PF sense router out of socket 470s equipment uh, using an old IBM case that originally had an Intel socket 370 board which came with the case as it was a pre-build from IBM. Uh, the original board is right here. As you can hopefully see with the new lighting, all the caps are in perfect condition. It still works. I powered it up, but a lot of the hardware I need for it can no longer be found. So the board I'll be using in this build, which I got for about $30 off of eBay, is an MSI, uh, where is the, uh, socket 478, and the information on this box ain't right. My apologies. I'll open it up. Before this, I cleaned everything. So, this board is actually a MSI 661 FM2 LSR. I'll be using a Pentium 4 3 GHz processor, which is right here. I have two port, two drives, which will be set up in RAID 1, because this board supports RAID 1. I have a data memory, two 1 GB sticks for a total of 2 GB. Using a stock cooler, has a copper slug. My nice tool kit, which is Vastar, just as good as I fix it for a fraction of the cost. Uh, Dell power supply pulled out of an old dead com uh, Dell computer, and a bunch of other stuff. I'll be showing in this video everything you need to know to build a PS sense router with this equipment. I hope you all like it, and as you can see, I also have a new voice recorder, so hopefully the audio is a lot better. Um, I'll see you all in the next part. Okay, to start this build, I'm going to put on gloves. Most, you don't really need them, but I've already sliced myself on this case enough. I had to bend this by hand. I'm waiting on an angle grinder so I can properly cut this piece right here. Uh, as well as cut this out further. Uh, sorry for saying that a lot. Like I said before, I do not write scripts. If any of you can see the screen on my laptop, no, that is not a script. That is fan fiction that I was reading. I have that open because I have a timer remind timer set to remind me to take more of my medicines. Oh. Always make sure you buy the right kind of gloves. I bought these at Harbor Freight for about six bucks. On the back is a nice size insurance so you know what size you need to get. These are nitrile. They are not latex. Uh, I also sometimes use these gloves when I need to do vehicle work. But as this channel is about repairs and technologies, rebuilds and all that old technology, I won't get into that. So, first of all, we will start with pulling the motherboard out of the box. Oh, I haven't used this board in forever. This was my first socket 478 board I had originally ever owned. I had to track it down. The reason I was able to track it down is because I put my own specialized uh, barcode stickers. So I have, I've always had a database of my own stuff of what was what, if I sold it or not, and if I sold it, I moved it to a new list if I ever wanted to try and find it to buy it back. Uh, it was very hard to find this board. I had to look around for about a year. And I was originally going to use this in a completely different build. That's why I bought it. Now, as you can see, it is a micro ATX. It uses three PCI slots and has an HGP slot for video. If you look very carefully right here, you can see that it has PCI capability, but because of these little notches that are in here, you can put PCI X cards into this. I have tested it, it runs PCI X gigabit NIX at full speed, so there's no bottleneck, well, no, their actual bottleneck. It uses DDR RAM, which is right, which I got right here for about 11 bucks, two gigabyte total. Socket 478, like I said, has two SATA ports with a Sys RAID controller. It has RAIDs 0 and 1. Uh, 
has two pedal ports, which is the old style, ribbon cables and all that. Um, back then you had to set jumpers for master and slave if you wanted to use two drives on one port. Now we're lucky with SATA. Uh, here's the old FDD port, which is floppy disk drive. Almost no one uses those anymore. Uh, <clears throat> once again, I apologize for saying that a lot. Oh, I forgot this was in here. This will be used in the next video to help me set up PFSense on the system so I can show you exactly how to install it all. Now the reason I had to go with a micro ATX in this case is because the standoffs are already pre-done in a way that you cannot modify them in any way, shape, or form. And this is a micro ATX case with only four expansion slots in the case. I have a faceplate for this. Sorry, IO plate. Shield, whatever you want to call it. All techs have different names for things, and yet they're all technically right, like thermal paste, tin, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but because this right here, shown both cameras, so I can find out which would be the better shot. But because of this right here, uh, I cannot put the IO shield in there. As a result, I am going to be buying an angle grinder to modify this case further. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the board put in. And just so y'all know, I always suggest test your hardware first outside of the case. This way, if there's something wrong with it, you don't spend all that time putting everything into the case just to find out. You gotta take something out and figure out what's wrong. As you can see, it's all nice and shiny. I uh, kind of went crazy cleaning this board. It's been so long since I've had it. As I said, this is a micro ATX case, so the holes line up perfectly with this board. Now, something I suggest any kind of person that works on anything buys that uses a lot of screws is buy something like this. It will allow you to organize all your screws exactly where you need them so that you don't lose track of them. <clears throat> now, this case originally had a lever right here that uh, would allow you to not have to use screws. I didn't much care for the lever, and to be honest, I broke it because it's plastic and it just got old, brittle, and snapped. So I took a steel bit for my drill and measured up the size next to the screws that I have in here so that I could perfectly drill the exact size that was needed. And then I hand put these in well, with a screwdriver so that I can properly thread them and not strip anything and have to drill again and again and again. Anyways, now that we got this open, let's get our Vastar uh, precision kit. Uh, this kit is really nice. It, and like I said, in my opinion, it's just as good as, uh, oh, I fix it. My apology, <clears throat> apologies. I worked last night. I had to work about 50 hours overtime. I have thought about working another 10 hours this week. I said no, because I wanted to release the video for you all, and I enjoy this a lot, a little bit more than my actual work. Okay, so, as you can see, well, hopefully y'all can see. I'll pull up this camera over here. As y'all can see, these have numbers in the bottom left. And uh, it will correspond to where they should go in this case. Also, as you can see, it numbers each one. And as you can see, it's a different one. So right now I'm looking for a Phillips bit that's got a nice little flat tip to it that can move the screws. Oh, it's also magnetic. And it extends and has a nice little, well, I forgot what it's called, but it allows you to move things at an angle very easily. Now, let's go ahead and get the screws in here. One of the good things about magnetic tips is it makes it easier to work on these kind of projects. That way, you, if you're working on a super tiny case where screws can get lost easily, you will not lose them hopefully, but it'll make it harder to drop them, lose them, have to take everything apart, find them again. Uh, the gigabit nick will be going in the bottom PCI slot to help with airflow. As you can see, this case is very old, and it did, like I said before, it ran a socket 370 CPU. Oh. Now, after we get all the screws in, this uh, case will use, let's see, three, six, seven, eight, seven, uh, total of eight screws. 
you can buy spare screws and the like on Amazon for about 10 bucks. Just so y'all know, I will post in the description exactly where you can buy most of this equipment. This board is a little harder to find because almost 478 is just old. I think it was, if I remember right, early 2000s it came out. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's the missing one. Seven, eight. Now, if you're very good at case modding, you can modify this enough where you can use ITX or any other style board. But I'm trying to keep this case as original as possible to maintain the, well, nostalgia of what I originally used this case for. It was my very first computer. Okay, now that we have everything bolted in, let me step over this can camera so I may zoom in. We're going to go ahead and install the CPU and the heatsink. Very slowly tilt it up. And there we go. Zoom in a little further. Oops, sorry people, this little camera does not like the stand. There we go. You will want to lift. I'm going to switch over to this camera. Don't worry, y'all. You're going to lift a little lever right here. One of the reasons why I don't like this style of socket is because CPUs were known back then to stick to your heat sink. So when you took the heat sink off to replace the CPU or redo the thermal case because it went bad or something like that, it would literally rip your CPU out of your socket. Line up the little triangle. Well, this board doesn't have a triangle. I forgot about that. But if you all look very closely right here, there's two missing pins. Uh, and there are two filled in slots here on this socket. So you can easily figure out which way it needs to go. Very easily put the little arm back down. One second, y'all. Chopper, are you okay? Sorry, no, my doggy was uh, huffing there for a minute. Wanted to make sure he was okay. Probably ate something I shouldn't have again. Uh, now that that's in there, we'll want to get our thermal paste. Now, something I ran into on an issue, the size grain of rice does not particularly like to work on this uh, heat sink because it doesn't bolt down. Uses little retention arms right here, so it wasn't the best design, but that's the reason I went with one with a uh, copper core, uh, some call it copper slug, uh, heat sink from Intel. I tried looking for various other coolers. It's nearly impossible to find a proper cooler for socket 478 anymore. Wow, that's on there tight. Uh oh. As you all see, I also have a new voice recorder. Hopefully that helps with the audio. Now you'll want to put about the size of a P, just a little smaller. I am using Arctic Silver 5, as it's what I've always used. Okay. Put the cap back on. These are big tubes, they uh, last forever. I bought this like a year ago. And I always replace their own cases like every, on all my equipment every six months. That includes game consoles. Okay, now we're going to very carefully put the uh, heat sink on. Although not that carefully. Now because this is an original Intel socket 478 heat sink, it's got clips here, here, and on this side as well. And you want them to very carefully get in there. Oof. It is so much nicer how easier it is to put everything on here nowadays. However, like I said, old technology still has plenty of life and you just gotta know what you want and then you have to just look for the right hardware. There we go. It's on there. As you can see. And then you slowly flip these clips over and it's mounted. Like I said, I can still move the heat sink. That's why I don't much that's why I wanted to find a better cooling solution for this. I have found 
several parts on Amazon for a make-it-yourself uh, liquid cooling system, which I might go with just to see what I could do on a socket 478 cooling it with water cooling. Okay, uh, one little thing you should note, try to keep this out of the way, the wires, because they can get annoying. I'll zip tie them later for cable management. Um, next we will put in the memory. ATEC memory. I got this for $11 on Amazon. It is a total of 2 gigabytes. Runs at uh, where are you? 400 megahertz speed. So, and remember people, I've tested everything before I decided to make this video. So make sure your little things are open. Align it properly. Remember, always align the notch where it's got to go. If you don't, you will break your RAM and you will be very sad. I originally had some nice OCZ RAM. Uh, I decided not to go with it because then the RAM wouldn't match and I want nice RAM that matches. I may eventually buy some nice little anybody heat sinks for this. Okay, next we will install our dual gigabit NIC. Let me get the box out of the way. <laughs> okay, here's the dual gigabit NIC. It is Intel. It is Intel I've never had issues out of, neither have I had issues out of lower style Linksys, uh, TP Link I think it is, and there was one other, but from what I understand they had went out of business, so as far as I know they have never made any gigabit NICs. As you can see it includes a low profile bracket, it is, that is PCI, that is PCI-X. Ooh, I'm getting a headache. Sorry y'all if I stop talking so much, which I'm pretty sure all you'll be happy about. You just want to see me build a computer. Very carefully put it in there. You'll know when it's in there because it will no longer go any bit further down. And see if I can get a close-up of... Oh shit, I apologize for that people. So I will have to take this camera off of here. To get you a better picture. Cut one, two, three. Oh, as you all can see right there, it extends further out than the PCI slot, but because of those notches that are in there, it allows it to sit in there properly. Now, if you ever do this, make sure the board supports being able to run PCI-X slot, slot cards because if you do not, chances are you'll fry the board, the chip, both, or it just won't boot up. If, if this ever dies, I will be tossing this NIC straight into a uh, Dell PowerEdge. It's dual gigabit, almost all computers still have at least one PCI slot in them. Now. Mounting this is going to be a little fun. I have double sided tape on its way. It will be going right here. Because this crossbar is here, I can use that for cable management because it's got a nice uh, bit of space right here. Plug in the 4 pin CPU connector. Sorry, plug. Once again, people, I'm making sure to make this video even though I'm dead on my feet. I've been up very close to 26 hours now. Oh, also comes up the driver's seat if you want to just put the NIC in a regular computer. <clears throat> now, uh, plug in the nice little 20 pin connector yes people these older boards use 20 pin connectors <clears throat> next install will be the fan 
This is one of my Arctic fans. Uh, bought it a five pack for about, I think it was out of 15 or $20. Uh, these dust filters are a pack of, I think it's 12. I have a 12 or 15 for like five or 10 bucks. I'll be posting links in the description of where you can get it all. Nice and easy. Arctic sent me the brackets for my mom's computer for the VGA cooler. Uh, the Arctic Accelero Mono Plus. And, well, I ran into an issue. The, something happened to the fan and the bearings on it were damaged. And, or the fan became warped. I have not been able to figure out which because I don't have another way to power it on while it's off. Because I have a new one hooked up. But I have contacted Arctic and they immediately sent one out as soon as I sent them a screenshot of the order from when I got it. It is a six year warranty. No questions asked. They just ask for your address after you send all that in. They get your address, they ship it out, and they'll send you an email letting you know they ship. It takes about six days to get here. I'll also be putting this on here if they'll sign a duct tape because it'll be going here. Not the best idea, I know, but I'm still waiting for more hardware. It all works. The hardware is more for mounting here and here. I'm going to cut this off with angle grinder. I already said that. My apologies, people. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up the power for the SATA drive, which will be the hard drive. I am waiting on a P PCI card that has SATA 2 support with the ability to run a SSD on this board. That is why this is still here. I know I said I was going to run it in RAID uh, 1, but the card I'm buying also supports RAID 1. I have the second SSD in my bedroom. <clears throat> that will stay there as soon as I zip tie it all. Now, next thing we need to do is hook up our SATA cable. This one has clips on both ends. The weird thing about SATA Generation 1 on this board is it's not a perfect square enclosure on the ports so it doesn't actually clip on it just slides on and you hope for the best but they've always been pretty stiff and know that it's not a reference to anything you'll want to plug it into the SATA 1 port which is the bottom of this board because it labels it SATA 1 and SATA 2 now that everything is pretty much together oh. My apologies, I forgot the bolt in the front fan. <laughs> um, just so y'all know, the 5-pack fans from Arctic come with nice little screws for all four ports on all the fans. So, about, let's see, 4 times 5 is 20, 20 screws. reason I have a dust filter on this is because it's going to be running 24-7. This will bring the cool air in. And I eventually plan on getting a fan outfit back here that will bring it out. Plug it into the header on the board for the fan. This build cost me a total of about... Oh, how much did it cost me? Too hard at most, just for the parts. SSD, once I get it working, will just up it a little bit, probably about 10 bucks, uh, because of the size of the hard drive. Uh, that's why the hard drive costs just about the same as the SSD. SSD has less room, but it's very fast. Okay, everything is in there. Spin the fan by hand very easily so that I can make sure it ain't restricted. And there we go. We have a nice little PF sense. Now we're going to do some quick cable management. I normally have a special pair of cutters I use to cut these so they have nice, very clean cuts. But, oh, I currently don't know where they're at. Well, I know where one set is, but I'm not going to get it. Because I am not driving to go get it. I am too tired and I'm pretty sure um, you'll say don't drive while you're tired, which I agree with. I catch you driving tired, I'll be sending a very strong YouTube message to y'all. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to find the best way to get it all. Okay. Yeah, screw it. 
Put the GoPro camera, get it. It's got better like, image quality. Now, I'm using small cable ties, so I don't have to waste my big ones. The big ones I normally use for big wiring issues, like my gaming case, which has so many wires running one way, I have to use big ones. Let's see. Pop this back out so we can run on the outside of here. Tie on. I'll see through this part. Hold on, y'all. It's okay, buddy. Ain't nothing out there. It's okay. It's okay, Chunker. You okay? He was a good boy, huh? He was a good Chunker. Pretty good boy. Sorry, y'all. He was a rescue dog. Do my best to help take care of him. My dad helps. My mom helps. My sister helps. Uh, I think he's missing my dad right now. Okay. Next up is continuing cable management. We're going to zip tie this together. Clean up the cable mess in here. Hope the small ones are enough. Oh, if y'all ever wonder what uh, video editing software I use, I use something called Wondershare Filmora. It is some of the best video editing software I've ever encountered as it is able to render at 1080p with using very little processing power or video card power. Right. Yeah, no, that's pretty scale management. Just going to try and make it a little better. Oh. You know, if any of my old school friends from any of my schools ever see this, ever see me, my name is Christopher J. Scott, born in February 13th of 92. And that's about the best I can do right now. Eventually, I'll be replacing this power supply with a better one. But this is for my home, so it's... Not really important as long as I get cool air in here. It's cool the uh, CPU. I should be good. Uh, I did a stress test on this. Did not go above about 65 degrees Celsius. And put a few more cable ties in to finish tying off all the wires that are up in here. I promise y'all I will speed through this. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? Let's put this last screw in. This is why you want to use one of these, because if you got a spare screw, you uh, messed up somewhere. There we go. Not coming out there now. Plug me back into the ports. <clears throat> One of the reasons I wanted to reuse my old IBM case is, like I said, nostalgia. It allows me to show you, no matter what anyone says, just about any case can be used. It just depends on what you want to do. That's why some people say, go with this, or this, or this. Well, some of the reason is people just want to hide the wires. My question, whoopsies, why hide the wires if it's not gonna run properly if you got a splice wires or anything. This is why I have a specialized tool for this. Let's see. Ah. 
Ouch. The tool I have is a pretty much a zero force cutter. It uh cuts in a way that it will slowly imagine a blade that is like this. This is how blades normally cut. Mine cuts slightly at an angle, with both sharp blades still going slightly toward each other, which allows for better uh cutting with a lot less force that also allows cleaner cuts. It is what I use when I do models. Now to trim the excess. Doing, 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 bit doing, oops. I dropped a piece in here, people. Can I get it out with these gloves on? Let's hope so. I got it. Okay, people. Well, the only thing left to do is get the cover. Let's see, run this a little differently. Back when I originally had this all put together to make sure it all worked. There we go. I'll be getting the double sided 3 tape to hold those together. Together, people. Get the front paint. Okay, turn those real quick. I'll get the front panel so I can show y'all what I've done to it. Ooh. I'm pretty sure if you've seen some of my older videos, pictures, and all, you used to have studs here. I now have a Dremel so I could get these nice and smooth, nice and even. This, I'm still waiting on the reset switch. It's late. I've contacted the seller. He's trying to figure out what happened. If a seller is willing to work with you to try and figure out what happened to your package, and if they can't find it willing to refund your money, they are a really, I would go to them more often than others. Make sure you line a power switch and your power LEDs right. This can also double as a reset switch, so just make sure you know how to do that. If you want me to show you how to do that, I will. Let's see, the top is for power, so it goes in like this. This board has to be hooked up a specific way with positive on positive and negative on negative for the power LEDs, or it will not come on. Boing. Boing. Now we just close this, people. So, we are done. My outro will show you all that it works. As you all can see people, the computer has booted up. It is in BIOS. Go to PC Health Status. There you go, running at 39 degrees Celsius. Uh, I was running for a while before I did this section of the video because I ran into some errors. Uh, that was mostly because the battery on the board's dead. My apologies, uh, I'll replace that soon. Uh, yeah, everything is running properly. Uh, oh, escape out. Now, here's the funny part. Exit without saving. Yes, I'm going to show you all the Sys BIOS. If it will let me. Ah, it's got to reboot. Like I said, everyone, this board hasn't been used in a very long time. Alright, control S. Come on. Oh. Sorry, people. It's board's a little finicky getting into the BIOS raid. Shoot fly, don't bother me. See, people? Current creative raid, non. Ray, enter Ray, set up utility, press R, press Q to exit current menu. Show you how a Ray set up would work. And it's not going to let me. But yeah, this board has potential. 30 bucks on eBay when I found it. Again. And I made sure to message the sellers of each of the boards to see if they had that sticker on there. I hope you all liked this video. Uh, if you liked it, press like. Subscribe if you like seeing this kind of content. Uh, 
comment on if you'd like to see me do something different with old hardware, find out what can be done. I have installed NAS for free on this board before. I have installed PFSense and it worked. It originally ran my PFSense in this house a year ago before I started making a lot more, well, more money. But the kind of money I make isn't enough to do enthusiast builds, similar to how Linus does. If I had that kind of money, I don't think I'd be working where I'm working. But, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all have a good night, good day, whatever time zone you're in. I'll see y'all on my next video, which will be one week from now. If there is an issue, I will post an update on what the issue is and why it will be late. And I will be doing a video log from now on. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Goodbye. And I really gotta learn to stick with one type of ending.